I made it to Keene University. I'm here at the, the Carl and Helen Burger Gallery here at Keene University to check out my man Duda Penteado. I've been really curious about Duda's like extensive body of work. So I'm here right now to welcome you. If you can come with me on this deep dive and into his mindset into how this work impacts us culturally, individually. So we're gonna get to check out how many lives, which I'm pretty familiar with. We're gonna look at some of the work that I have never seen before. We can go through, we're gonna interview some of the patrons in the family of art collectors and just get excited and maybe take a, a little bit of a deeper dive. My name is Jorge Ortiz and I'd love to welcome you to Duda Penteado's uh, exhibit. We're here it's to an celebrate. Yeah, well, here to celebrate Duda and the work that he's done. I mean, the, the man is a is a genius, and the way he has been able to take the art and and all the mediums and just put it out there for everybody to understand. There's so many points of entry, you know, not just for students that are studying art, quote unquote, but social justice, all kinds of historical perspectives, or environmental, there's just endless ways to access the work and that's what I think gives it such a broad appeal. This exhibit is, is unique. It has different facets of, of his life and it, the storytelling that's going on in this room speaks to, to anyone and it won't be the same thing depending on the person. That's the beauty of art. You don't know how you're going to react. I keep using the word primordial, you know, because of the bones and things like that, that images that he uses. But he is a, he's a, a man of the 21st century. He's not old fashioned by any means. He is very forward looking. But what you're seeing, I think, is you're seeing those universal human qualities, those universal things that apply to everybody. Uh, joined by Duda Penteado and Sam Cintron with Cintron Vidal Design Group, uh, who's curated the uh, the event. Uh, we're here to welcome and to celebrate the newest members of this family of art collectors, uh, Giselle Pagan and Dr. Pagan. So welcome and congratulations to Felicito, because you are the proud owners of three original Duda Penteado silk monotypes are yours and I wanted to we, we do this with the, uh, the the new members of the family of art collectors as you place your red dot and claim your original Duda Penteado so it is my honor and pleasure to hand over the red dot thank you Dr. Pagan Te Giselle, Giselle can have. and for Giselle as well oh, Christine too. Oh, and Christine Thank you guys so much. They are, these are the last three silk monotypes for the Mental Fossil Series from 1998. I worked with Sheila Marvin. She was a master printer in New York. Uh, she created the silk monotype, you know, uh, on the pop art movements, they did a lot of silk screen. But also the silk monotypes were more on the ground that they were not about mass productions. These are very special. Um, they are the last three ornamental fossils in this shape and this kind. And oh, this they, is the, line. the last three, there is no more. And I cannot make more because she's up there somewhere waiting for us, you know. <laughs> she left us a few years ago. Um, uh, I loved her and um, she was my first mentor in New York. She has a very, have a very emotional attachment to her. This artwork is about the evolution of life. It's about elemental fossil. It's, it's about the architecture of life, right? There's the things that we build, but there's the things we are. And in our bones, in our fibers, it's who, in our brains, in our veins, it's who we are. So this is the architecture of life. So it points back to the, the human kind of journey. So, oh, that was awesome. I'm a little emotional, I love it. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. You. So
he does is he takes these things that are left behind and he constructs something out of them, just like our own lives. Uh, the question when, when we look at this is, what are you planning to leave behind? Because this is a creation of things that were left behind. But this, this just brought me back to when I was 15 years old in Hawaii, up on the mountains, looking down at the beautiful ocean. For some reason, the flow of the piece snapped that. So one of the things that I love about Duda's work is that he's always surprising you with how inventive he is in terms of materials, but also subject matter. And when I first saw this particular woman holding her baby, that I, she was screaming with the exclama uh, exclamation point, but um, I was just feeling no matter how hard I think sometimes, particularly mothers uh, scream, nobody hears. When Duda created this, uh, which was in 2005, it, it's still timely today. And probably regrettably, but also to his genius, it'll be timely in another 10 years. The issue is about um, borders uh, and, and how we perceive it, and, and identity, and, and being nomadic, and having to move where the resources are, whether it's money, uh, food, uh, providing for your family with food or money, education, uh, it's always going to drive people uh, to move, inclu including myself. It reminds me of issues of immigration and how so many people die on their way coming to the Americas. We have hundreds of years of history just for the Spanish and the Portuguese coming. And I read this beautiful essay and see clips of the documentary and I was just holding back tears back there. Culturally, this is this is what we feel when we experience them. Obviously it affects not only the person, but also the families and the friends and everyone. This is what we need. And I think his strongest power is to communicate with the youth. And the youth have created one of the largest murals in Jersey City. And every kid participated in that mural, doing his strokes under the guidance of Duda. The artwork is, is really, really good, really, really good. But for me, uh, it's the process. What these kids go through, collaboration, team building, leadership building, problem solving, planning and implementing. This is a skill set that kids can now take, you know, put in their, mm -hmm. in their, in their tool bag right. and take with them either to higher education or mm -hmm. looking for skilled yep. people that can think through problems. He was able to take this magic, this mysticism, and invite students into it and get these students to tap into their energies, their fears, and transition it into a fearlessness that many of the students that I'm friends with on Facebook today are still in gratitude and indebted to Duda for helping them transition to a very uh, troubling time. I mean, this piece here, I remember when it was first unveiled in New Jersey City University, you know, years ago, um, in 2002. And then you, you, you go from that, that was right after, you know, the 9-11. 9-11 happened literally just a couple of miles from where we both live in Jersey City. It touched us in a way that was uh, perplexing, but as the painting says, we found beauty from ashes. And the way I love it, the way this installation with the bones connect with the bones here. And here it is. You see him there? He's right here that's, in that's, the painting. Yeah, he's called Joka. Joka is right here in the Joka painting. Joka is this character here. And, and he's, he's there. Right so the way, the way we're related. Yeah, but to make it real, he had to make an appearance physically. The manifestation and the prophetic walk became a walk through this valley of dry, oh, dry bones. bones. Yeah, right in into the space where the where the tragic and the reflective happened. For everyone around the world probably asked themselves that question: Are we able to recover? Are we able to heal? What do we say next? Can we rise up from the right. ashes? Yes. Where, where are we at? Thank you, guys. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. It's been great. Awesome. Appreciate it, so man. Jorge.